Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now this uh, video is another one in the classic cameras from the past series of videos. Uh, this one doesn't go too far uh, in the past. It's the Fujifilm GA645ZI medium format camera. Uh, this camera shoots uh, 6x4.5 uh, negatives and it evolved uh, from 1995. It slowly evolved uh, from the GA645 then the GA645W, then in 1997 there was the GA645I, and then in the same year the GA645WI, and then as I say in 1998 it evolved into this camera. In 1999 they did fetch an, an all black version out, uh, that's pretty sought after and it will cost you a lot more than this champagne or titanium colour, but they are exactly the same camera they've got the, the exact same functions and they'll take the exact same uh, pictures. Now some people say that the uh, 6 by 45 negative is not a big, a big enough jump from 35mm but I totally disagree with that because if you look on the screen here you can see on the, on the left hand side there's the 35mm size and the, and the side of it on the, on the right is the 6 by 45 size negative. And you can see from that comparison that the, the 645 negative is nearly three times bigger. So it follows that you're going to get to higher quality pictures. So if we take say 35mm and, and the 645 format using the same type of film, you're going to get bigger enlargements with this, uh, with this format. Uh, higher quality, you'll be able to crop in uh, with not a lot of loss in quality. Whereas if you did the same with 35mm, you will see a loss in quality. In fact, I go as far as to say that if you shot uh, a, uh, an image with this camera, say a portrait, and then you shot one with a 6x6 uh, six six or 6x7, six uh, and then enlarged to the same size, I don't think you'd see that much difference in the quality. You know, contacts fetch their uh, 645 autofocus uh, a 645 camera out years ago and it's still a sought after camera and it shows that even contacts at that time had confidence in, in that format. The beauty of the format is that uh, because the negative isn't um, you know as big as a 6x7 or a 6x9 or for that matter a 6x6 the cameras could be made smaller, more compact and more user friendly. Whereas some of the uh, bigger format cameras are really big cameras like the, the you know, the Mamiya 6x7, uh, the RB series, uh, the uh, even the uh, uh, Mamiya uh, 6x7 uh, rangefinder camera, even that's a, a biggish camera compared to this one. So there are reasons uh, why it's a popular format and I'd highly recommend it. Now in this video I'm going to walk you around this camera, show you how it works. Uh, I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. But first of all, I'm going to show you a, a video I did the other day, walking about with this camera in the local woods. I'm just showing you how easy this uh, camera is to use. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you some pictures that I've taken uh, years ago, uh, well over the years, uh, using this camera. And uh, show you the quality of the pictures and how far you can push this camera to get uh, some images that are quite different. Uh, the lens on this is absolutely superb. I don't think you'll get a better lens on any other camera. And you'll see that in some of the pictures where I've really uh, pushed this camera by shooting into the light and it, it's really never uh, let me down. So let's uh, have a look at me uh, having a walk about with the camera and uh, show you some of the pictures from that. Right, got the camera loaded with uh, Ilford HP5. Uh, it, it's quite uh, uh, bright today, uh, we've got a little bit of cloud then, and then brightness so that, that's good but one of the main things is the wind, it's really really windy and in fact uh, just as I was coming out of the house uh, the power went down so I uh, don't know when that's going to get back up because I can't see them uh, going up pylons and fixing it in this wind so fingers crossed by the time I get back uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be back on. I'm just going to go to the local woods where I live 
and see what I can come up with this camera and after the video I'll, I'll show you uh, some of the pictures I've taken in the wood but I also want to show you some pictures that I've taken in the past uh, with this camera it, it really uh, it, it is a superb lens on this it's probably one of the best lenses I've ever used but I'll just show you as I say at the end of the video uh, what you can do with this lens and how far you can push it so I'll set off now and see what we can come up with Right, I'm right at the top of the Chevy now and you can see Otley down below, that's where I live it doesn't look that big from up here <laughs> now the wind's so strong I think you're going to struggle hearing me so what I'm going to do is mount the, uh, mount the GoPro onto, uh, onto the uh, hot shove of the camera and just let you see me taking the pictures I can hardly uh, stand up when the gusts come so what I'm going to do is move further down go down the path you just can't see it's just uh, just in front of me and then make my way down where I might be a little bit more a little bit more shelter so um, that's that's my plan the ghost, whoa. <laughs> picture this path loads of times but not uh, not with this camera so Going to put it into aperture priority mode and you're going to know all sorts of whines and dings it's just the camera focusing and focusing and uh, making all sorts of uh, noises as it winds the film on so that's the first shot broken tree been blown down a while back so I'll take it in the vertical vertical format with the camera and uh, might get some nice uh, textures from it oh that hard work and that's where it's come down from strong the wind now anyway I've just seen this uh, this knurled tree beautiful texture and patterns in it so I'll see what we can come up with this uh, doing portrait format shutter speed is 45th of a second at f4.8 So I got that one, quite like that, see how it turns out. I 
old stones that I was telling you about and uh, I don't know why they're here I don't know how old they are but they're, uh, they must go a fair, way, a fair old way into the ground um, to keep stable like this now whether those uh, put in to stop landslide I just don't know I would think probably be that but I don't know how old they are so I'll uh, attempt to take a picture of this uh, first one I think I'll try and throw the the background out of focus if possible so I'll use it wide open and get as close as I can which is a, a meter with this camera I think one of the problems I'm going to encounter shooting at this side of, the, of these blocks or these stones is that the all the tones are very similar to the trees etc so they're gonna you know not really stand out so I'm gonna try and go to the, the back of them and see if I can get a better a more consistent tone without blending too much and I think that probably works here so Let's have a look, see what the camera's going to give me on this. Now I can shoot in vertical format, like this. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to turn the GoPro, or I can shoot in that format. So I think I'll try both of them. So, again, I want some fall off in the focus, so I'll lock it there, if I press it, the shutter button halfway to lock the exposure and the focus and then pull back a little bit see what take one that way come back a little bit further and take one at this angle again locking the focus and the exposure and trying it like that So I have two to choose from. That's the uh, beauty of these sort of cameras. Uh, the 6 by 4.5 is that you get 16 exposure on a, a 120 roll so you can um, you know just experiment a little bit more if you're not sure take another shot because you've got that uh, so many frames you know 6 by 6 is 12 6 by 9 has only got eight exposures so you've got to be a little bit more careful but the 645 you've got just that uh, little bit of leeway to be able to just do a little bit of a bracketing or trying what I did there a vertical and a landscape format so it does have, have it has its uh, advantages so quite like this picture we've got the path leading in uh, there and then we've got the tree and I love the light on it and I think I'm just gonna add um, half a stop more exposure because I think it might underexpose a little bit and then as you can see as well we've got the rocks in the distance somebody stood at the top 250 a second at f9.5 I just love the textural quality of this this rock and, and the shapes of it so I'm going to take a picture of this in the uh, vertical portrait format and see what we can come up we've got some nice uh, reflections shadows of the trees 60th of a second f8 
so that's great what i can see actually there if we look up here there's an eye and then there's a, a nose there and then there's a mouth at the bottom it just looks like a eyes nose mouth a bit like a, a lion <laughs> now i've got to retrieve my hat it's blown off it's a long time since it's been as windy as this right one shot left left i think let's have a look yep so I'll see if i can get a decent shot for the last one now is absolutely beautiful as the sun starts to go down it just gets that lovely uh, look to it it's not too harsh I've used this uh, camera many times now and uh, I've learnt with it that you have to uh, use it as it was uh, originally intended as a point and shoot medium format camera I'm so used to using the old manual cameras where you set the aperture on the lens and the shutter speed on the, on the top plate of the camera etc uh, using these cameras it's all automated and it, it really does jar at you when you, you, you're used to being in control uh, setting shutter speeds and apertures etc but the secret with these cameras is just to let go and let the camera do the work and uh, that's where they do become enjoyable uh, you don't see them as involved with the picture taking process but when you get home and develop the negatives you probably find you've got pictures that you wouldn't have uh, otherwise taken with your other cameras so my advice would be if you buy one of these cameras just put it onto a, a program and just shoot away and let the camera do the work and uh, just enjoy uh, taking pictures right I've got to say one shot left and just see what we can find the sun now is getting lower so we'll just move on slowly make his way back to the car and uh, and get this film developed so for this we've got the pylons and I'm going to hide the what you might call the bare sun behind this this post here and just see how the uh, camera does its exposure I'm not going to do any adjustments just leave it to the camera so portrait format again that was 700th or second f22 some people think this camera only goes to uh, um, 500th of a second but it does go to 700th it's not rewound so I might have one more shot left we'll just see So I just tried to take another picture and the ca camera rewound so that was the last shot that I took. Uh, the light is getting absolutely beautiful now. And how many medium format cameras can you do that with? In a pocket. So that's another advantage using this, uh, this camera. There won't be many 6x4.5 cameras you can put in a pocket. So let's take a quick look around this camera and I'll show you how uh, the certain functions uh, etc work on it. Before you buy one of these cameras I would always suggest that you check the accretations how many times the camera's been fired and you can on this camera. If you press the exposure compensation button in and then turn the mode dial to ISO it'll give you 
uh, the amount of times the camera's been fired, the accretations. This has done 900, so it's always advisable just to check that. Now to get the camera up and running, we have to insert the batteries. They go inside the hand grip. You unscrew this uh, screw here, lift the cap up, and it uses two 3 volt batteries like this. Put them in and you're, you're up and running. The next thing to do is set the date and time uh, on the LCD screen using these two buttons. Uh, I'd advise you always do that because this camera prints uh, data on the edge of the film and it'll give you the, the date and the time that you took, took the picture and it'll give you all the relevant uh, uh, de uh, exposure uh, details also on the edge of the film. So set the date and time. Now once you've done that there are a couple of things you can turn on and off. The first one being uh, on the lens there's a, a sensor, lens cap sensor, it's just a little hole there. Now this will tell you, uh, warn you, or it won't allow the camera to fire if the lens cap's on, providing that uh, sensor is switched on. But you can uh, switch it off uh, for whatever reason. And I'll show you how you can do that. To do that you push the, the up button for the zoom button up and then turn the, the mode dial from off to ISO. And now that sensor is turned off. I prefer it to be on. To do that you just simply do the procedure again. Push up with the lever, turn the mode dial to ISO and it's on. So I leave that one on. The other thing with this camera, it does have an annoying beep. Every time it, uh, it winds on or activates the shutter, it makes a beep. And uh, every, when you come to the end of the roll, it beeps about five times and, and it's quite annoying. So I like to turn that off. Uh, to do that, again, you use the ISO button. You press in the self timer button there, press the ISO button, uh, sorry, the lock button, and then turn the mode dial to ISO. And then you can see that the beeps are on there. Again, to, to uh, turn it off, repeat the procedure, press in the self timer button. Turn the mode dial to ISO and now it's off. So I, I, I turn that one off. Now loading the camera. You lift this latch and then turn it anti-clockwise. Open the back. Uh, make sure you've got the, the take up spool in. Press that little red button. And that gives you easy access to load your roll of film. Put your film into the camera. Press that back in so it's locked in. Pull the leader across, locate it into the slot there. I always find it awkward when I do videos this. And then use the up down dial to advance the film. And then make sure before you do any more that the pressure plate is set to 120 there. You can't get 220 roll film these days, so make sure it's set to 120. If you forget to do it, don't worry, you can do that on the LCD screen when the camera's closed. So you wind on using this, this uh, dial here. Keep turning it until the start mark lines up with that red dot there. Then close the camera back. Turn the camera uh, to on. And the camera will wind on then to the first frame. So you're now on the, the first frame. And then the next thing to do is set the ISO. And you do that by pressing that button and moving it from, move it, moving it to ISO. And then you can set the ISO on this camera. This camera runs from 25 ISO up to 1600 ISO. But it'll also work in uh, auto. Uh, some some 120 roll films were DX coded, so if you wanted you could put it into auto. I always uh, set it manually. So that's how to load the film and set the ISO. Now we look at the front of the camera. This is a superb lens, it really is. Uh, it's a, a 55 to 90 millimeter f4.5 uh, to f6.9 autofocus zoom lens. Now to give you an idea. Uh, if you're not sure the about the medium format uh, focal lens, I'll give you the 35 millimeter equivalent. It's 34 to 56 f 2.8 to f 4.3. Now this is a list of the apertures available at different focal lengths on this camera. It has a 52 millimeter uh, filter thread, 
so that's pretty standard. This is, a, as I say, the lens, uh, the lens cap sensor. Now you can use this camera in manual focusing, turn the autofocus off, but in reality it's so finicky and awkward to use. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to use it because I know after you've tried it once you'll not use it again so I won't show you that. Just use it in autofocus because it's very very accurate. This is an array of windows. Uh, it's got the viewfinder with auto parallax adjustment lines so if you zoom into the subject the lines will adjust so you don't get uh, a parallax error. Uh, you'll always get what you see in the, in the viewfinder. The camera has uh, infrared low light uh, autofocus, uh, phase detection for normal AF, it's uh, centre weighted and a very accurate meter, it's got a sensor, uh, uh, flash sensor as well on there and then it's got a, a, red, a red light there that flashes uh, on and flashes continuously for the last two seconds when you use the, the self timer. Now if we look at the side of the camera, this side we've got a standard cable release socket there so you don't have to buy uh, an electronic one and that just screws in there to the side like that and you can activate the camera using the cable release. It's got an, uh, an eyelet uh, thing for the strap there and this is the way you open the back and that closes in and sits flush with the camera. It's a very comfortable uh, camera to hold. At this side of the camera another eyelet thing there for the strap and then this is where you've, you'll fit uh, the, the PC sync card if you use a, a flash gun uh, on the hot shoe and not the built-in flash gun. Now the back of the camera you've got the LCD screen which can be illuminated which is very handy. You can set the camera as I said before to record data that gets imprinted on the film uh, like, like you can see here. It gives you all the relevant uh, details that you need to know so if you're in um, Aperture priority if you like to work in that mode. As you use the up and down dial you can see that the aperture is altering and the camera will automatically set the correct shutter speed. The ISO you set that by pressing that button putting it to ISO and you can set the ISO using that. It also shows you uh, when you're using exposure compensation so you're pressing that button and move that dial and as you can see it runs from plus three to minus three so you've got a good range there and as I say you've got the uh, frame counter number tells you which frame you're on uh, battery uh, life indicator it tells you even uh, even tells you that you've got the pressure plate set to 120 uh, so all in all it tells you quite a lot on that uh, LCD screen the in the viewfinder on the camera it'll show you the uh, distance that you, the camera's auto-focusing to, it'll show you the, um, the shutter speed and the aperture that you've chosen. If, uh, if it can't get that desired exposure, in other words if it's going to underexpose or overexpose, the camera will uh, flash to let you know and um, you have to then readjust the, uh, the aperture if you're in aperture priority to bring, bring the exposure in so it'll be correct. Uh, if you're in manual uh, exposure you would put it in manual on the mode dial and then you can adjust the aperture using the up and down dial and then using the exposure compensation dial, a button press that in and then you can set the, the uh, actual shutter speed. And all that detail is in the viewfinder. Uh, if you're using it in man manual mode there are arrows pointed up and down and you adjust the aperture and the shutter speed until both arrows meet together and that tells you that you're correctly exposed. We have the pop-up flash lever there, button you press that, the, the, the flash pops up, press it down. So it's great for a fill flash, it's not a very powerful flash. This is a self-timer button, if you press that in it shows you on the LCD that the cell timer is activated. Press that and it runs for about 10 seconds. Uh, once you've used it, uh, a good feature is that that automatically turns off. And another nice feature on this camera, it's got a, a diopter adjustment there. So you can set that to suit your uh, own eyesight. The top of the camera, we've, as I say, we've got the pop-up flash there, which you use that button to push it up and just press it down manually. The mode dial here 
uh, runs from, as we've seen, you've got to, uh, it locks into position, which is another good idea. It runs from there where you set the ISO to completely off. There. You can set it to full program mode <coughs> where the camera will set the desired aperture and shutter speed. You can put it into aperture priority. That's where you control the actual aperture and the camera will set the uh, correct um, uh, shutter speed for that. Or you can put it into AS mode. Now that means that if you're in aperture priority mode and with the flash open and you're going to use the flash gun the camera will not allow you to go below 1 45th of a second to avoid camera shake. But if you put it into AS mode using the flash the camera will allow you to use any shutter speed. So it's great for slow synchronisation. You know, if you're shooting at night and you want um, something in the foreground uh, to be sharp, the flash will light that and then the background will have a longer exposure. So you can get some really good effects with that. This is a exposure a compensation button. As I say, you press that in and turn that dial and that gives you your exposure compensation. And this is your, your hot shoe at the top. There's your... That's where you fire the camera shutter button there. You can with this camera autofocus on a subject and half press of the shutter will lock the autofocus and it will lock the exposure. Uh, so that, that's another nice feature. It would have been nice if they could have separated that so that you could have just locked the auto uh, the autofocus and then still adjusted the shutter speed but you can't so uh, it's something you have to put up with. Now the bottom of the camera uh, there's really nothing there. You've got the standard uh, tripod mount and then you've got the uh, uh, mid, mid roll winding button. But keep in mind if you use this uh, it's not the same as a 35mm where it winds it back into the roll and you can reuse it. It will find the, it will wind the film, all of the film that's left onto the take up spool and, and you can't use that film again. So that's uh, about it. That's the camera. Uh, it's easy to use. It has some odd ways of working which I'll talk about a little bit later on but all in all a very very nice camera. And uh, finally the things that I like about this camera and the things that uh, I wish were slightly different. The first one is the using the uh, operation of the exposure compensation. Uh, you, you have to use one hand to do it. You press that button in and you use that dial to adjust it. It would have been much better if there had been another dial somewhere at this side so you could have used two hands pressing that button in and then adjusting the exposure compensation. So that's one thing. The other thing is the zoom lens. As you can see, it runs in steps from its uh, widest focal length to its longest. I wish that you could have used the full range of the zoom to set it anywhere, just for uh, just so you could uh, you know fine tune the uh, composition without having to rely on the camera using steps like this. So that's another thing. The other thing with this camera, the the widest aperture uh, at the ninety millimeter setting is. Uh, is, is slow it's at f6.9 and it means that you know using this camera in bad light 
you're going to have to use it on a tripod or you're going to have to uh, uh, you know use a, a lot faster film. I wish the lens would have been a bit faster at that focal length but uh, I do understand why they've done that um, just to keep the, the camera small and more compact. If they used a, a faster aperture the lens would have been bigger and the camera would have been bigger. So I do understand that but it would have been nice just to be a little bit faster. And finally the other thing I'm not keen on is when you um, uh, half press the shutter down like that it locks the exposure and it locks the autofocus. It does them both at the same time. I wish that when you did that it locked the autofocus but you had still had control of the exposure. So they're just uh, some of the things that I wish uh, had been different. The things that I like about the camera, there's so many things I do like about it but first of all it's the, the, the lens on this camera. It's absolutely superb. It really is a beautiful lens. And the exposure meter uh, works flawlessly most of the time. Um, so, you know, those two, just the, the exposure meter and the, and the quality of the lens makes it worth buying this camera. Little things on this camera, just like the, uh, the uh, diopter adjustment on the top of the viewfinder. You know, it just makes it uh, a lot easier to use. A camera's in this area or just before that before these cameras were made uh, often didn't have this uh, and this just makes it uh, more user friendly the fact that it has a light on the on the back LCD they're just little things that make all the difference uh, the viewfinder is great to look through it's nice and clear and when you when you're using this camera if you've used one of these for the first time you'll see when you look through the viewfinder that the orientation is in portrait format. To use it in landscape, you go that way. But you do get used to that, and it's not a problem at all. I like the fact that it's got a pop-up flash, as daft as it sounds. Uh, I've used this where we've had, you know, we've been taking uh, pictures of people, uh, and they've been the sun's been behind them. Uh, just using this flash just gives that little bit of filling light. It's not a powerful flash, but uh, it does come in handy. I like the fact also that you've got these modes, you've got the full program mode, you've got the aperture priority mode and you've got full manual control over the camera. I'm glad it didn't have shutter priority, I don't like shutter priority, I don't think any camera should ever have shutter priority but it, this camera, uh, fortunately Fuji realised that and they didn't put it on this camera. So you've got some nice modes to choose from. So basically it's a, a very very nice uh, camera to use, it's well built. It's, uh, it's lovely to hold and I've enjoyed uh, over the years using this camera and, and, and I've taken some really nice pictures. Some of the best pictures I've ever taken with media format cameras have come from this, this actual camera. The Achilles heel with this camera is this. If I open the back, if we can see that there, I'll just see if I can focus on that. Just there, there's a. You might not be able to see it, but there's a, a a ribbon cable, and that runs to the to the from the camera body to the LCD at the back. And when you're using loading the opening the back on this camera and letting it spring back quickly or letting it go back too far, it stretches that cable, and uh, over time it starts to lose connection with the with the LCD panel at the back of the camera, and. Um, if you're going to buy one of these cameras and you, you look at the LCD and see that some of the numbers aren't clear or they're broken up, it means that this, the camera is uh, it's on its way out and uh, once, once that uh, LCD display stops displaying because that ribbon cable's broken, then the camera becomes a doorstop and you won't be able to use it. So that, that is another thing you need to look out with these. That's one of the main faults with this camera. The camera, uh, you know, is very good in battery life. You can take a lot of photographs uh, with this camera on, on one set of batteries. So uh, there are lots of things that I do like about the camera. It's great just to let yourself go and go out and come back with, you know, quality medium format negatives. So that is the Fujifilm GA645ZI camera. Now, if you have any questions about uh, this camera, uh, please leave them below and I'll get back to you. If you like this video, uh, please uh, give me a like, a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, 
uh, better still subscribe to my channel and as I always say stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video.